as a follow-up to yesterday's video, I'm going to speak about why I don't consider myself alt-right either. I mean, yesterday I said I discarded the far-right label. I've already said in the beginning of this year why I don't consider myself a reactionary, but I never said anything about the alt-right, the alternative right. And there's a YouTuber by the name of Far Westman, and I've seen one of his Facebook posts. And I hate to be rude and actually speak about it, but what he said was perfect. So, alt right. Semicolon. Not semicolon like that. Colon shit. It's neo-Nazis, pickup artists, monarchists, traditional Catholics, Orthodox Christians, right libertarians, radical traditionalists, eugenicists, and white nationalists. That's what it seems to be composed of, specifically the second one, a lot of pickup artists in that community. And... I'm going to go ahead and explain, oh, reactionaries, too. How, how could I forget? Let's start off with the first one, neo-Nazis. It's obvious that I'm not a neo-Nazi because what do I know about national socialism? I mean, I've read Mein Kampf, like the first chapter or two. That's about it. That's that's as far as I've ever gone into National Socialism. I haven't read much about it. Never thought of becoming it. Doesn't seem necessary for me. Pickup artists. Put a female in front of me. Nine times out of ten, either... I'm not going to do anything, or she's going to end up trying to game me to get me flustered. But other than that, mm, I read Hartis back in early 2012, which I'm going to get to later, but Hartis is annoying nowadays. I thought he was really entertaining in the beginning. Roosh is actually really good, though. He's still a great blogger when he's not on Return of King. When he's in his personal blog, 10 out of 10. This guy knocks out of the park. I wish I can tell as good of a story as him. I wish I could educate myself as well as he does. Even though on Return of Kings, all he talks about is how chicks are always going to leave you for someone that's going to make them feel better then you can never make them feel good. You know, stuff like that. When he just sounds like an inverted Beyonce or some kind of Jay-Z ass nigga. Baruch is good. I, li I like him as a writer. Other than that, PUA stuff is a little boring. Game stuff is repetitive kinda get an annoying sales vibe and I get scammed way too much here in NYC so I don't like not to say that game is a scam game works but the very style of it annoys me outside of Roosh so I wouldn't consider myself a PUA I don't study the art I'm not about that life not interested. Next we have the monarchists. Now, a year or two ago, I said that the monarch is the political alpha male. And people heard this and said, Zomji de Fabrizi, monarchist. Nope. What I probably meant at the time, 
and this is going by the fact that I don't remember half the shit that I say, or even like follow with the way I frame things every like two weeks. So it's gonna be a clusterfuck. It's gonna be a mess, but this is inevitable. <laughs> Now, why I don't consider myself, why I said that actually, that's what we need to start with. I probably said that because a monarch is supposed to represent a, an entire history. An entire age, an entire people. It's all summarized in one person. So that, that's probably why I said it. as opposed to maybe a more subservient for the people supplicating beta kind of leader which you can see in a lot of other heads of states presidents dictators they're of the people there there's some supplication involved monarchists it's not always like tossing ma but you can bet that there's a little bit more of a alpha male structuring or rhetoric involved. But I'm not a monarchist. No, man. It's like calling me a Nazi. Why? Traditional Catholics... Orthodox Christians, no. No. Like, I know what my faith is and what it isn't. It's not that. It's not that at all. And before someone calls me a Protestant or a Sid of Vincentist or something of that nature, no, it just... I know what I am, and that's not what I am. I wish I could say it in a way that's a little less blunt and dramatic, because then people are going to start assuming shit, but no, that's just how it is. Okay, right libertarians. Okay, I still hold on to a lot of libertarian-esque thoughts. Obviously, Austrian economics K. That shit sucks. Watch someone in the comment section try to, like, debate me if people actually watched my videos. That would be the case, uh, but no. There are some things where I would follow the libertarian mentality of to each his own, that pseudo-Satanist, and, and I'm saying that in a very endearing kind of way, that do what that wilt kind of thing, minus the psychopathic nature of it radical traditionalists I'm, I don't live a very traditional life I'm not a very traditional person when I think of the traditionalists and most people's solution to modern problem find a female start a family become part of a community join a church that's never been a fantasy of mine. I've always been somewhat of a hermit. That traditional place where you're in a... You belong somewhere. Where you have your own people. I never really cared for it. I mean, think about the way I speak. Psychologically speaking, do I sound like a person that really wants to belong somewhere. I mean, my subscribers are mostly in the right or they're libertarians from the fallout of 2011, 2012. And I still speak. In fact, more than ever, gradually, I'm on that NYC 
type of bionics. I'm not trying to present myself in a traditional way. I don't think of things in a traditional way. I'm not a traditionalist. Now, I understand what traditionalism usually means. But even then, I don't really care about traditional environments. I know there's a good in them. I'm not condemning them. I'm not condemning anything I'm listing here. I'm not condemning Orthodox Christianity, Catholicism, specifically the traditional kind, monarchy, pickup artistry, Nazis. I'm just saying it's not me. No, not even right libertarianism. Eugenicism. Oh, here, now there's a difference because I've never heard anything of the eugenic nature that doesn't sound a little weird to me. I'm speaking about nature as if it's some kind of laboratory. And speaking about social and political issues, like, you can have that controlled. That's always strange to me, and that's an unfair straw man, but I just don't like the nature of that writing. It always seems kind of weird, kind of sterile. For example, how are we going to deal with the fact that whites are no longer the majority in this nation? They're the largest minority, but we're currently outnumbered by everyone else as a total. Um... Either you're going to go for the radical traditionalist thing, where you have them all together, or you're going to have to go with the eugenicist thing. I would rather go with a traditional start a deed kind of thing than a lab science test tube, let's, let's just clone a bunch of whites kind of thing. Yeah, that's a straw man, but those are two of like... The easiest, most logical conclusions, besides the happening, of course, so, who knows. And I do find that as an important issue, because that's Brazilification. See, I just made up a new term, it's probably not something where I'm the first one to say it. Probably didn't even... Some definitely use that word, Brazilification. I mean, we're being Brazilified as a nation, as a country, as a people, and that's not a joke. I mean, you can look at it in a funny way, but no, that's legitimately a problem. Uh, white nationalists, nationalism that explicates a racial narrative based on a great race the white race I call it the great race you know Caucasoids Mongoloids Negroids it's not necessarily nationalistic enough you need something like a religious basis you need much more because otherwise it's going to end up something that's less nationalistic and more pan-secessionist. Which I know it's a lot with the fringe elements of the world and things of that nature. Reactionary, as I've said before. Just because something calls for a return before the status quo doesn't mean that it's necessarily better. And sometimes that can be obstructive. And I did write a blog post on this. Same thing with the white nationalist thing. So you can go back to that. I mean, sometimes... A lot of what reactionaries say is good, but they start saying things like condemning the United States because it's a democracy or a republic, and that it needs to be a monarchy, or things of this nature. That It starts to get more in the way 
then it starts to become a solution. I keep my I'm not out here trying to like kill all these or deconstruct all these viewpoints. I'm just saying why well, I'm not really committed to anything. That says more about me than it says anything about these motherfuckers, but still. About fascists. He didn't include fascists or reactionaries, but still. Um, I don't know. Fascism, I've always said that. There's a fuck somewhere but I just can't reach it. And what I want to conclude, what I want to be as, what I want as a clincher for this, how long is this video? This was a 16 minute video, so it's actually pretty lengthy and the whole time I was just, I wasn't even looking at myself, I was looking at my current window, just like, scrolling down my news feed because, why not? Damn, I'm greasy. But what I want to conclude, all jokes aside, all tangents aside, is that back in early 2012, or even throughout 2012, when I was an anarchist, you could say I was more alt-right, because I was a, I was becoming gradually more of a right libertarian, still open-minded towards some left ideas. I didn't want to say that everything leftist is bad. Uh, I didn't want to get into that binary state of mind, and I also know that playing the middle ground is kind of a pussy position. But again, I I would speak more about traditional ideas, like a traditional diet, how things were back then. I was an arena guy, and everyone was an arena guy until until shit started getting weird. Now I'm just bopping around. Half of these things, except for maybe. Orthodox Sikh Catholicism and neo Nazism, I was a lot more open to it. Oh, you could even call me back then a bit of a white nationalist. But now I'm not committed to any of this. I would be if. I felt that it was the wise thing to do, but no, I'm just hopping off that train. Never consider myself all right. I always use the far right label because the far right label is more edgy, to be honest. And as I've said from the previous video, what about me is right wing? What about me is left wing? If anything, I'm just an edgitarian. You can't just say that I'm right wing because I'm a racialist. That's not enough. That's like not even close because old school leftists were racialists too. Racialism isn't something you can put in some kind of binary because it's more complex. You can attribute capitalism to the left or right because capitalism is an economic system. Capitalism has no personality. Same with socialism, same with monarchism, republics, democracy, fascism. They're means to an end. They have no personality. They're Blank slate, they're machines. Or cogs in greater machines. Whereas races of people, genders, all this stuff, edutarians like me, 
say. And I like how you use the term vegetarian. These are people we're talking about. They have personality. You can't just place them on a binary. And while I don't like saying shit like that, you know what? It's probably the truth. It's probably the closest I've ever said to saying something that's true. So I'm gonna take take it and say it with pride. Like that's it. Anyway, that's all I gotta say for this. Felt that it needed to be said after what I said yesterday, so. Shout out to everyone who inspired me to make this video. That's what's up. Inspiration. I don't get a lot of that right now. So I gotta look for stuff like basketball to talk about. Speaking of which. Somebody needs to get me a Cleveland Cavaliers jersey. Psych.